Welcome to another session of analytical techniques. Today we'll understand what is ion exchange chromatography. Before we move on, subscribe for more informative videos and tap the like button if you like the video and share your comments after watching the video. At the end of the session, you'll be able to elucidate the principle of ion exchange chromatography, describe the types of ion exchanges and how to choose the appropriate ion exchanger for the separation of a given mixture, explain the steps involved in the separation of charged components and discuss the elution process by sol gradient and pH gradient method and list out advantages, disadvantages and applications of this technique. First, let us understand the principle behind ion exchange chromatography. Ion exchange chromatography is a technique used to separate the ionizable molecules or charged molecules present in a mixture by the difference in their net charge using the stationary phase that is ion exchangers and the mobile phase it can be salt solution or buffer solutions. Here the things to notice it can be used for separating the charged molecules and we are going to look into the net charge of the molecule. Here it's very important in case I have a protein it's comprised of many amino acids. I'm not bothered about the charge on each amino acid but I should look at the net charge of that complete protein for the separation process and it's very commonly used to separate the biological molecules like proteins, peptides, amino acids and nucleotides. For any chromatography we require a stationary phase and a mobile phase and stationary phase here it is an ion exchanger. When I say ion exchanger it can be an anion exchanger or a cation exchanger. First it is comprised of a solid insoluble matrix like cellulose, agarose, polymethacrylate, polystyrene or polyacrylamide which is covalently bonded to fixed um, positive ions that is cations. In case of anion exchanger it is fixed to cations and in case of cation exchanger it is fixed to uh, anions. So these are the fixed ions, these are not the exchangeable ions. So further it will be attached to the exchangeable ions. The cations will be attracted to negative ions and that negative ions will be exchangeable ions. Similarly here it will be attached to the positive ions and those cations can be exchangeable. So this you should be clear with the cation exchanger. Further these cation exchanger and an anion exchanger are available as strong cation exchanger and weak cation and strong anion exchanger and weak anion exchanger. It depends on the group being attached on that solid matrix. Here we should understand that it's very very pH sensitive process that is uh, ion exchange chromatography. So if I choose a strong anion or a strong cation exchanger I need not worry about the pH because for the whole pH range it will undergo exchange. But if I choose weak anion or weak cation exchange I should be careful and look at the pH range that is I should look at the pH range of my mixture to be separated as well as the uh, weak uh, ion exchanges pH range when it because it will be exchanging ions only in the small range of pH for example 6 to 10 or 4 to 7 pH okay so you should match the pH and then only choose the weak ion exchanger now next we'll go on to the mobile phase that is we have two methods of elution sol gradient and pH gradient for sol gradient how my mobile phase uh, uh, concentration of the salt is considered we should look here. Here the most important part is the concentration of the salt and the pH of the solution is important. Now first we will bother about the concentration of the salt. Start buffer that is during the equilibration process we the buffer being used or the mobile phase being used we call it as a start buffer. Its strength should be low concentration because it should not be very tightly bound to my fixed ions present in the solid matrix ion exchanger because my sample buffer the mixture which I am interested in to separate should easily exchange with the ions being present in this equilibration process that is the ions which are getting attached in this equilibration process. So the concentration of the sample buffer will be the same as that of the start buffer. Okay now elution buffer that is one by one the components which I am interested in has to be eluted out of the column so slowly I increase the salt gradient that is solution gradient that is I increase the concentration slowly I increase my salt concentration during the elution process. So my buffer solution mobile phase is not remaining the same in all stages of separation. 
the name is different as well as the concentration of the salt is different at different stages of the separation now if my ions are only positively charged very easily i'll choose a cation exchanger to separate it and if it is only negatively charged i use an anion exchanger to separate it but in case of ions like zwitter ions which has both positive and uh, negative ions that is for example amino acids possesses both positive and negative then what type of ion exchanger i should choose and at what ph i should choose the buffer solution matters a lot first we'll understand what is this so this positive and negative is neutralized so the net charge is zero if both positive and negative are present and the ph at which the net charge on a molecule is zero we call it as isoelectric point and we represent it as pi and if the ph of the solution is slightly lower than the pi of the molecule of interest then it gets deep uh, protonated that is nh2 gets protonated to nh3 plus and my molecule is positively charged and the ph at which the molecule is positively charged is termed as pka1 and it is positively charged i use a cation exchanger to separate it and in case i increase the ph slightly greater than the pi then deprotonation takes place this h plus ions are moving out and you have coo minus so the ph at which the molecule is negatively charged is pka2 and this is minus in case like glutamic acid uh, amino acids will have two cooh groups so i can have an other pka3 where both Deep, further deprotonation takes place and we have 2 coo minus and we'll have pka3 where it is 2 minus charge so how to choose an ion exchanger if it is slightly if the ph i is slightly lower than the pi of the molecule of interest it will be positively charged so i use a cation exchanger to separate it if the ph is slightly greater than the pi it will be negatively charged and i choose an anion exchanger to separate it so this is what we have discussed in the previous slide now let us go for the separation how to choose the start buffer and sample buffer's ph once i need to separate the molecules i assume that i have six different types of proteins or amino acids with different pi's this is a mixture containing six different molecules of different pi so i am interested in the first three molecules and i want to separate these three molecules i am not interested in the last three molecules so the main aim is the interested molecule should be bound to my ion exchanger exchange should take place and uninterested molecule should be unbound it has to be removed out so i should choose the ph in case i choose a ph slightly lower than the pi of all this three for example 5 then not only this three all the six molecules will act as cations so i'll use a cation exchanger no purpose all the six will get bound to the cation exchanger so that will not work out so i'll choose a ph slightly greater than all the three for example 6.5 i choose 7 because at least 0.5 units it should be greater so when i choose the ph as 7 now i see that the first three molecules the ph is slightly greater than these three so these three will act as anions and the ph is neutral for the seven because the ph is equal to pi this will become neutral and for these two the ph is slightly lower than these two pi's so these two will be act as cations so what will happen these three are anions these three only i am interested in so these three will not be bound if i use an anion exchanger when i use an anion exchanger these anions will exchange to the exchangeable ions or counter ions present in the anion exchanger this is how i select the ph and the exchanger required for the separation now first process is equilibration process in this process the first thing is the exchangeable ions has to be bound to the fixed ions so i am taking an anion exchanger for separation i have fixed cations so i require the counter ions or exchangeable ions to get attached i take nacl solution 
when I take NaCl solution, the Cl minus ions we get attracted to the positive ions present here, and this Cl minus is the exchangeable ion now. So this is how it's called as exchangeable or counter ions. This process is equilibration process. And the pH of my sample application, even before that, we can understand by a graph also. That is, on the x-axis, we have a column volume. That is, how much each fraction is there and time, at which time I am collecting the samples. Violet color or this lavender color is uh, shows the salt concentration. In the beginning equilibration process, my salt concentration is very low. So, it is at the baseline. And Every fraction I analyze using UV spectrophotometer or a conductivity meter. Here I am showing absorbance, so I am using an UV spectrophotometer. I did not elute anything, so it will be on the baseline at the equilibration process. Now next step is I am having the mixture which is having anions, cations and neutral ions at that particular pH. Okay, I have chosen the pH as 7 for this particular mixture. Now when we pass the sample we call it a sample application when the sample is applied into the column we see that the anions get exchanged with this Cl minus ions and Cl minus ions come out and the cations and the neutral ions are unwanted ions and it gets washed off from the column so the cations neutral ions and the exchange chloride ions are washed out of the column and here we see that the anions are bound in which way it is bound the lower strength one is bound at the bottom and the higher strength has more affinity towards the anion exchanger so it will be at the top level this is how the anions are bound now i need to elute one by one and we'll see here the sample application it shows some peak because the sample has some absorbance but the salt concentration of the sample is same as the concentration of the uh, start buffer so it is in the baseline still but the unbound molecules that is my cations and neutral ions have come out washed off so if I take a peak I the UV peak will be shown for the unbound molecules also but still now I did not increase the salt concentration I go for elution now salt gradient that means I need to slowly increase my salt concentration so when I slowly start increasing now it's at very low concentration I slowly start increasing when I slowly increase the concentration at lower concentration the low charged ions only will get exchanged highly charged ions that is a2 minus and a3 minus will not get exchanged at that low concentration we see that when I apply the salt solution at low concentration, first low charge A minus ions are exchanged and we separate this out in the first step. And we'll see with the graph, we see that the first component has been eluted. We can observe it in UV. Now we see that the salt gradient has increased. I have slowly started increasing the concentration of the salt. Now I further increase the salt solution. Automatically we know that A2 minus ions are Again, lowly charged compared to this A3 minus. This is getting exchanged and it is separated out. And we see with the graph that A2 minus has been eluted and the salt concentration has further increased. Now, finally, A3 minus will be eluted. When I increase the salt concentration further, it gets exchanged and A3 minus is separated out. This is how we separate the components of interest and we remove the components of uh, which we are not interested in. We can see that the third molecule I have represented with the same colors as the molecule color so that you will understand the elution peak and the salt concentration has increased. Now here I have actually have showed that all the uh, ions have been removed and it has been replaced with the Cl minus ions. But there may be some impurities which are very tightly bound to the column which has also to be improved, uh, removed out of the column before I start with the next run. So what I do is I go for a very high concentration of salt so that any tightly bound molecules even tighter than this A3 minus will also be removed off and the column will be ready for the, you see, the tightly bound molecules which were present is also removed and this process we call it as regeneration because the column is ready for the next run now. But I cannot go for this high concentration. You can see regeneration process I have done at very high concentration of salt. It has gone to a peak. 
this violet uh, lavender color now i should again go to low concentration before i start the next strand that process we call it as reequilibration i am going for the low concentration which again i have low concentration cl minus and ready for the next process and now this is ph gradient elution we saw with sol gradient elution for ph gradient elution we'll see how the ph varies that is start buffer as we have already seen in the first slide in the beginning slides ph should be greater than pi for anion exchanger and slightly less than pi for a cation exchanger and sample buffer always the same buffer conditions as the start buffer but here the interesting part is the elution buffer that is how i need to elute the three molecules of my interest separately so i match the ph of my solution with the pi of the molecule of interest slowly i change you will understand with this we have already my start buffer is 7 so sample buffer is also 7 these three are anions these three i am not interested i am interested in these three so i need to remove it slowly one by one i match the ph with the pi of each solution so from 7 i cannot jump directly to 5.5 so from 7 i'll go to 6.5 then to 6 then to 5.5 so the process will be reverse then what we saw in sol gradient first a3 minus will be eluted then a2 minus and then a1 minus see i am matching the ph of my sol solution to the pi of a3 minus that is 6.5 and we see that the a3 minus ph a3 minus is becoming neutral because it is isoelectric point of a3 minus and it has been removed next i match the ph to pi of a2 minus that is 6 so this becomes neutral because it's the isoelectric point of a2 minus and a2 minus get exchange and it becomes neutral i'm not showing any charge here it's becoming neutral and it is being separated and finally i match the ph of this one with pi of a uh, minus here somehow by mistake i have put it as a2 minus okay it's correct only a minus i am matching the ph to pi of a minus that is 5.5 i see that finally a minus is removed becomes neutral and this is separated this is how we separate using ph gradient so i match each component's ph with the pi of that molecule it becomes neutral and it is removed off this is how we separate to summarize the process equilibration process is the first process where the counter ions or the exchangeable ions get attached to the fixed cations or anions and here i should choose the buffer conditions proper sol concentration and proper ph sample application here is very important i should bind the targeted molecules and unwanted molecules should not be bound it should be washed off so i should choose the buffer conditions depending on that and elution is the process where i separate using sol gradient method or ph gradient method and separate the components of interest separate uh, one by one regeneration is i make the column ready for the next run i see that all the unwanted co components or any tightly bound impurities everything has to be removed so i increase the concentration and it is fully ready for with full capacity but before i start with the next run i should go for the low concentration low ionic strength sol solution so i go for reequilibration also if i go for the next run and advantages of this method it's very efficient for to separate charged particles which can be large to small molecules but most important point is high flow rate because mostly in most of the column chromatography we adjust the flow rate to for the resolution to take place but here because the charge the buffer's ph and the concentration of the buffer plays an important role i don't bother about the flow rate whether it's low or high the separation takes place so it's a very good advantage I, it, it will not be time consuming very soon i can finish the process but the disadvantage is i de require different sol buffers different ph conditions for the elution and it's highly ph dependent slight change in the ph resins will lose the capacity and its resolution also will spoil off and it's only suitable for charged molecules uncharged molecules cannot be separated by this method and applications there are several applications i've just listed few protein analysis i need to separate proteins or amino acids or nucleic acids i can do for water softening demineralization process or zeolite process you can watch the link given above 
uh, for uh, demineralization process we use ion exchangers there also and clinical analysis hydrolysis of proteins amino acids from blood serum food industries we can use trace metals from sea water rocks also can be done and this is all for the session let us meet in another session until then bye bye please drop in your comments and tap the like button if you like the video and subscribe if you haven't done it let us meet in another session bye thank you